In this video we're going to take a look at calibration and data analysis for TGA. So the calibration is done using the Curie point method. So we have a ferromagnetic uh, material that has a known Curie point. We then uh, put that in the TGA instrument and apply a magnetic field to give an additional apparent mass on the uh, mass reading. And the magnetic mass is lost at the Curie point. So if we look at the instrumentation, we have our standard here. So this uh, sample pan contains the material that is ferromagnetic. We've got a magnet. And so there's an additional force pulling down on this sample pan due to the magnetic material that's in here. Once we get to the Curie point when we heat up, then we lose that extra apparent mass because of the force that's been applied here because the material goes from being ferromagnetic to paramagnetic and so then we can calibrate the temperature scale because we're using a material that's got a well-known and a well-understood Curie point. And this is important because our temperature sensor is next to but not actually touching the sample pan for reasons mentioned in a previous video. So it's important to calibrate this temperature reading. And then if we have several standards then we can measure and, and calibrate temperature over a whole range uh, for, the, for the temperatures that the, the instrument is working over. Okay in terms of data analysis then we can get some very complicated thermograms we have different processes of overlapping so we're just going to have a look at what we can do about that for a moment. If we have a simple step down that's very easy to see what's happening and the temperature which is, is occurring and, and, and the mass loss that is associated with that step. But for more complicated traces um, it's it's useful to actually get the derivative. So look at we can get the gradient of this trace versus temperature. And if we do this for the simple one here we can see what we get is this peak that's pointing downwards. So to start with the gradient is zero and then the gradient becomes more and more negative until it gets to the bottom of this peak that points downwards and then we get back up to here. So by Getting the derivative, um, it helps us to understand this curve a bit better. Now, as I've already mentioned, this is quite a simple curve, so we don't really need to do it. But what I'm doing here is just illustrating what we get when we take the derivative, just to short, sort of show what it happens with a simple one. Now, if we uh, look at something that's more complicated, like this curve here, if we take the derivative, we can see and we can sort of pull out different features. So for example, this step here, it, uh, we can clearly see that it's happening in two steps and it, that wasn't particularly clear here. And actually this final step here looks like it might just be happening in one, but if we take the derivative, we can see that the process is happening in two stages. So if we put these dashed lines in, we can sort of see how these link up and see where these downward pointing peaks are, or, these, or troughs rather, um, we can sort of see how they match up. Okay, so we can also link specific processes to the method uh, if we've got a very well behaved material that is being analysed. And the classic example is calcium oxalate monohydrate. So if we take a look at this, that will decompose first of all by losing the water and then the oxalate will turn into a carbonate and then we'll get calcium oxide at the end. So we can link this to um, very definite sort of decomposition processes and that can be very useful in the analysis that we're doing. Okay, so that's been uh, a video looking at TGA calibration and data analysis.